You guys, today, I am so excited to have back for the third time, two of my favorite people. I fell in love with them first when they were on the people's couch, but they are also just like the best damn guests you will ever have. Also, <laughs> their podcast, Dumb Gay Politics, I had the pleasure to be on a while ago, and I think I get to be on it again. So it's like, wow, we're at Christmas time already for me. Uh, they just are amazing. You heard them constantly on Heather McDonald's podcast or Jeff Lewis's podcast. Uh, but now they are here again with us and we're going to talk uh, Beverly Hills. We're going to talk Salt Lake, Brandy Howard, Julie Goldman. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having us. We're, <laughs> we're ready for a mustache ride. Sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. See, <laughs> we were already just doing podcast gold before we hit record because I was asking them their opinion. They had not seen me since I had gotten the mustache and uh, Julie has to really get up towards the screen because yeah, she can't I, see it. I can't really, even with glasses, I have to look. I was like, I swear it's there. Like it is totally. And then she it's said, I'm rocking a gentle, I'm rocking oh, yeah. a gentle mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Which what is, I don't mean? think, yeah, I don't think anybody well, wants me, to hear that. Yeah. Let me, well, do, don't they? Well, she, wouldn't lesbians I, like a gentle mustache? Here's the, <laughs> wait, here's on a lady the or on a guy? No, no, no. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. No, no. <laughs> No, I for me personally, she, no. She has a gentle no. mustache. I have she one. I have a full beard. <laughs> I have a full beard and I get rid of it. But I would think now listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I should think for a lady who's gonna be on that face, you don't want over the lip, you don't want it to be crazy, you don't want it to be long, you don't want it to be all encompassing. If you're gonna have some facial hair. Take, I want it to look for me personally. I yeah. like it to look manicured and gentle and nice because that says to me, I'm thinking of you because my. So you're saying you want it very well, face. very very well groomed, like a Backstreet Boy, like yeah. very. Yeah, I want it very well groomed because like a George Michael, figure. older, kind of very tight. Yeah, and... yeah, give me that. You are manicuring that which leads to it all which says to me you care about me and my feelings and what's happening on my face <laughs> we're always thinking about the curtains matching the drapes or whatever the downstairs <laughs> I, I think, haven't you seen and i and does i'm the, very does the mustache very, match the drapes <laughs> i'm so and i know i shouldn't be because i don't even have to deal with men's faces but i have a thing about facial hair my brother people in my i just there's something about facial hair when I see long beards or just, I think you just must hate women. You just must. Well, hate you know women. what? It, it is one of those things that <laughs> I, I obviously fall into tra the trap. Like I'm a sensitive guy, but at the same time, it's one of the only things where I'm like, listen, I'm not into sports, but I can grow facial hair. Like that is what may, like that is one of the things that I can like kind of makes me a dude because yeah. everything else I'm very undude like. And then with this, I'm like, look at this. I can grow different kinds of patterns. patterns. I can grow. Yeah. But the thing I, I didn't tell you guys. You still this have is, your hair. And it looks yes, good, by the way. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's just soaked in sweat right now because I just finished a workout. But yes, um, just your man. Just got back. <laughs> hey, uh, you ever, hey, do you guys ever lift weights? Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. You, you ever yeah. pump? Uh, it's all um, about strength training, Ryan. <laughs> it's all about strength training. <laughs> yeah. We got to get the muscle mass up. You know? I, can I give you, you ladies some, some tips about exercise? <laughs> Did um, you get some protein before you got on the mic? Hope so. Okay. I had some protein. Um, Great. So I, I, dye, I tried to dye my beard because it was like all gray and white and I'd use the just for men and mm -hmm. I had used the just for, this is a fascinating story. I used the just for men years ago and it, and it worked and it wasn't that bad, but now it was turning like gray, gray. I used it. And uh, the next day my face blew up like the nutty professor, uh -huh. like clump. Like it was like, and I'll, I'll show you the picture because you guys don't probably believe like how ridiculous it was. Uh, I'm going to send this so you, to you had allergic reaction. I had an allergic reaction, which I didn't know you could like get one as you get older, like new things can just pop up wrong with your body. Oh, well, um, just for men. The formulation probably once was non-toxic and now nothing we do is non-toxic. Right. Yeah. No, it, I'm, okay, I'll true. find the picture later. But like I was also it was just for men. I was like, I'm a man. I can deal with this. But it turns out I can't. My face blew up. I had to go to urgent care. And they were like, yeah, you had a bad allergic reaction. And then I had been scratching it. So I gave myself um, no. uh, like a, a bacterial infection from my oh nails. My oh my God. And so this was like a whole process. And then oh this God. is how dumb I am. A month and a half later, I go, that must have just been a bad day. 
I'm going to die. That was just a bad day. I'm back. You know, like, let's do this again. Cause I don't want to, you know, like I'm going to do it again. And I did it. Everything was fine. Looked great. I was so excited. I Next sad year, is what I don't believe. <laughs> it's probably two, one color, really dark. Yeah, it, was, it was jet black. And uh, <laughs> and then the next day I wake up nutty professor again. I have to go back to the same urgent care. And this guy's like, wait a sec. Aren't you the guy that came in a month and a half ago with the same thing? And we told you not to do this. And I was like, oh my God, was that you? You know, it was like, it was so bad. Uh, um, okay. Wait, Anyways. can I just tell you one quick thing about that? Just for, for your listeners. Yeah. The, I think the thing that's in that, which is in a lot of like shit that makes also your like, what's that shit you put on your scalp to make your hair grow like Propecia or whatever. Shampoo? Like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, like all the hair grow, whatever. There's a thing, a preservative in all of that stuff. It's called propylene glycol. It's what keep, it keeps wet things wet. So when they send the just for men to the warehouse, it sits in a warehouse and it'll dry out. So they put this preservative in it that keeps it wet. That's the same preservative. I have the same allergy that you have. That's the same preservative that's in vapes. So, and it will, if you're allergic to it, it will make you so fucking itchy and it lasts. Oh, it was. And people are spitting that in their lungs, regardless if they're allergic. It's still a preservative. That's Julie, did you know Brandy knew all of this stuff about that preservative? Did you know about that? I did know that. But she did. Okay. Every day. Every day. I did know that. I know that because, well, yeah, I did the vape. Because I, have I been try smoking to encourage people to stay on regular cigarettes. Yeah. Don't get on a vape. If real. there's one message we're out yeah. there pushing, kids go back to the cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's probably it's better for you. I and mean, it's sexier. You and think it's cigarettes are better for you? Yeah. They are. I'll they tell you, are terrible for you. Uh, and, and not only are they because of the the preservative, and obviously there's preservatives in cigarettes too. However, the difference is. If you smoke cigarettes, you will end up smoking less than you will vapes because vapes, you can smoke anywhere, anytime, any place. You can lay in bed. You can sit on the toilet. You can be in a restaurant. <laughs> you can. I would. I tried to quit smoking on a vape. I had 10 vapes lying around and I would wake up with a vape like under my boobs and <laughs> in my underwear because I t- I would. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because you can, you know, you get in bed and you smoke that vape. Because you, you got, know, you, yeah, you. like I, it is so, and I, I didn't even smoke a vape up until a couple of months ago. I used to smoke cigarettes. I quit that. It had been like 10 years. And then all of a sudden like this, vape, and I'm like, all I do is like podcasts and sit in my room and stuff like that. And then I'm like, you know, it'd be fun to have like a, you know, not, these are vapes. It's just like flavored smoke. I don't even think there's nicotine in this thing. And now it's everywhere. You're right. Like I'm in bed with a vape. Yeah. Like yeah. I, wake up and the vape's always like yeah. i lose my remote and my vape and that's and, right and you get stressed out too and you don't even need it but you, need, you know where is the vape she was always looking the little cap was everywhere yeah it's and, and it's like it truly i'm very disappointed like this podcasting life that we do it's not for the faint of heart like this is really horrible work but the vape to dark, me it's like dark I need, shit. and i got back on diet coke too like, okay I, so <laughs> you and me are the same and except this you have a mustache you should really be smoking cigarettes with that mustache. <laughs> yeah, by the way, we can all agree cigarettes like... look better and cooler than vapes. So yeah. much cooler. They smell if you're going to do it, I mean, the thing is, for you and I, I'm going to assume, who have addictive, gluttonous, binge-worthy personalities. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, totally. That we have to take one of those things at a time, I would say. say. And so I'm addicted to soda, too. Coke Zero, I can have a, probably a case a day, but yeah, it's like water. <laughs> it's water. It's yeah. water. I got a Yeti. Okay. This is a Yeti. <laughs> and, in Yeti and it says wine. dumb gay politics. On it. Wait, you guys sell these Yetis? <laughs> no, Leah Black Leah, got us yeah. that. And she oh, got Leah. Leah. <laughs> and Julie, the blue one. And I was like, that is so annoying. And Julie's like, fine, I'll take the pink one. So I have the blue one. The blue I'm not afraid. <laughs> okay. I'm secure in my manhood. <laughs> So <laughs> inside here is a shit ton of ice and just water. Sometimes I'll add a squirt of like some kind of juice, but it has to be a certain kind of juice. Anyway, I'm telling you this <laughs> because this will help you get off of soda. Now, as you're doing that, because this is ice cold, this is going to help you. I promise you it's helping. Okay. 
Ice right cold. now it sounds horrible. You're just telling me to drink water with ice. I know. Yeah, she but hated water. I hate water. That. And all I drank, drank was soda. So, <laughs> but it's because of the, when you pop open a Diet Coke. Yeah. It's crisp. Bitch. It's crisp. A- a- erotic. Like, like it is like, oh. holy, like that's my 50 shades of gray right yes. there. I was like, wow. Yes. Like this is intense. When you have ice cold and you can listen. Tea, iced tea. Iced and- tea. You can put in a shot of whatever your favorite. I have a, a gentle mustache and a glass of iced tea. Yeah. Just uh, in a Yeti. I'm like, telling you. Like, well, do it at home. Don't let anyone else see. But then while you're doing that, get off the, the vaping. And I, I know it's going to be terrible. Figure out a way to go back to smoking. She just had to start smoking to get off the vape. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you then you go have back. You tried to- harder drugs. Like, I mean, yes. Know, are yeah. you kidding? <laughs> We never stop. <laughs> I'm my own this, addict. Does not with smoking. The cycle of abuse for smoking can only be, in my opinion, uh, curbed. And don't even say you're going to quit. I think that's a big mistake. Do not say you're going to quit. Just say you're going to cut down and try and force yourself to commit. Make a goal. I'm, I'm going to smoke. Um, I don't know what it is for you. I'm going to smoke when I'm at a show. I'm going to smoke. Yeah, only- yeah. Uh, two cigarettes in a day and then figure out when the your triggers are where you desperately need them because we really don't need it as much as yeah. we, think we do. Well, Lisa Rinna is my trigger. That's one trigger. And Smoke there's when a you lot of her lately. Like, uh-huh. So I would be yeah. smoking packs Segway. and packs a day. Yep. Um, but also, this, I know this is way too long, you guys, on the smoking thing, but I am curious. But with the workout, like we're, we're trying to get back in shape. We were just yeah. talking about that too. So yeah. I feel like I deserve the Diet Coke and the vape if I'm putting my body at risk by well, trying to get back in shape. Yeah. Well, and you kind of, I think you have to allow yourself you to have one it. one Diet Coke. But you no have vape. one. Cigarette. You, Cigarette. Have, you have one. And then you- You got to have a cigarette. Honestly, sexier, you'll be outside hanging out with people. (laughs) And the the vape is holding on to a preservative preserves what's there. That shit is holding on to anything you have, whether it be, even if it's just bloat or water weight, that shit's holding on to that fat. You got to, the vape of telling you with smoking, you'll get all cracked out and vibey and then you'll just get like weird, like Iggy Pop vibes. But you, you also are forced, with smoking. You're forced to go outside with smoking. And yeah, that's the thing. And social. that's why you're able to start to curb it. Because now that you know with vaping, and this could be mental, because I knew with vaping, I was like, oh my God, if I could smoke in bed, like fucking it's 1972, <laughs> and I'm a person who wakes up and it's like, I would do that. Yeah. So, like I want to be, I want to yeah. be Fran Leibovitz. I want to be yeah. like, that's yeah. like my dream life, which by the oh, way, yeah. Next week uh, at BravoCon, hopefully you'll see me smoking outside the Javits Center. Like, That's you'll correct. Be like, I just heard you talking about yeah. your smoking journey. That's now you're correct. back. Everybody um, go look for Ryan in a sexy mustache, smoking, being cool, gen- no, having a, a gentle beer. mustache. Um, a gentle <laughs> mustache. I'm sorry. You need to take that. That is a positive <laughs> comment. <laughs> um just before we get into Bravo, I just want to once again mention the podcast, Dumb Gay Politics. You go subscribe right now and always hit five stars on any podcast. Anybody that even tends to come on this podcast, it's a huge gift to us. So do not forget to give that gift back to them. Uh, but also it's a great podcast. And you guys actually had like a pretty awesome episode this week, or I don't, I guess this is going to be uh, last week. Um, you had uh, Shalita M. Shaw on and it was like a really cool conversation about mental health. I mean, how was that? And teachers, it was really, we took two weeks off and because we have terrible mental health and are not caring for ourselves, um, we're abusing ourselves right now, but um, she was great. It was really interesting. I think we were, it's a political podcast for anyone who, you know, so don't come if you don't like liberals <laughs> the, you know full die but it's you like but see what i'm saying like it, it comes through you guys and we love you guys so i feel like you sign up for that journey because we love you and it's like that's what i'm saying like i'll even listen to it and i do actually like politics so it's different but it's you guys are just funny you guys just work off each other so well so there's that added element like i could listen to you guys talk about bravo politics you could do a cooking show for all i care you know oh that would be great i would love that that's well, so we nice. were happy to talk to her and it was, we had been hard on teachers kind of in just in general, cause we don't have kids. So it's like, we are hard <laughs> them, like fuck school, but she was really, even one small thing that came out of that, which was really interesting was like unrelated. We were, we might do a live show in Boston and the, the, the booker or whatever wrote on the, oh, yeah. her automated signature at the bottom of the email said, um, Please, please feel free to email back 
after work in, in work your bi- in your business hours i respect your time and it, it was like yeah because the thing that that shalita said was like the, bro they're fucking emailing me and calling 24 me 7 in the middle of the summer at nine o'clock at night and i'm busy like yeah. and and we kind of all just be, now because of phones and everything we just sort it's of just stop yeah, it's like it, I text you at like eleven o'clock at night. Like, yo, are we still doing this? It's like that's yeah, so- I know. And I was like, oh wow, I like it's well, I've I've done this thing where like I actually just switched the new operating system, and I used to have all my notifications on silent, uh, just because it was like too distracting when I would try to record, and then I would look down and get distracted, and I need to put it back to that because it really just I realize how much distraction there is on me, and it used to be fun, but then when you're actually trying to do something with your life, and you're like, I think I have a purpose now, so I'm trying to do this, and then there's that phone, and there's that Instagram, or there's that Twitter, and all you know, like there's so many fun distractions that are you know, or, or Kanye West is going to post again. And you're like, I want to see this breakdown. And it really is hard to do the important things like watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Salt Lake City, you know? Yeah, exactly. It is. <laughs> hard. It's so true. It's true. Shalita was like, not only was the she informative and I thought like vulnerable and honest and all that, she was infectious. It, I don't know how to describe it. Like her laugh, her positivity. She would talk about shit that like she was clearly going through. The, her spirit being broken and we can all relate to that even if you're not a teacher or whatever and then sh- just the inspiration of someone picking themselves up and staying in the fight like it was yeah. it just was so fucking awesome and you know what ryan she she heard about us because we were on married to medicine getting our vaginas checked by dr jackie walters right married so to medicine actually doctor. uh this sunday I mean, we have potomac and married to medicine this sunday and congratulations to you guys on that whole waxing situation very <laughs> exciting for you uh, uh, you uh, she checked, uh other- dr jackie did okay. check our vaginas she did <laughs> exactly. i do have one by the way and uh, <laughs> yeah, wait. She her, her vagina <laughs> has a gentle mustache my yeah, <laughs> right. gentle mustache <laughs> i care i care <laughs> so she did, we did a boob exam she got in there well, she, she did that too or you guys did that to really get in there we picked yeah. julie to do the breast exam and me to do the vagina, vagina. on camera on camera, but we both had to do both. It was a real doctor's appointment. It was horrible. Awful. Wait, but that, and that would have been awful if you actually found something really wrong. But can you imagine moment. if she was like, you God, imagine, like oh, wait a minute, there's a lot on. I'm going to die. Like, you know, like you're doing the bits and the jokes and oh, all yeah, of a sudden it's say, like, yeah. wait a second. Oh no. Um, uh, hopefully this will lead to more waxing opportunities for you guys yeah. <laughs> uh, down the line. So. Um, but I mean, you, you're back on Bravo, but I, you're not going to go to BravoCon. Like, I know like that, that pisses me off just because I, I was thinking, I was talking like Brandy was, you know, text me at like three in the morning. And I was like, are you guys, <laughs> I was like, are you guys going to BravoCon? Maybe I can actually meet you guys in real life finally. And, and you're not, and that bummed me out, but I, I totally get it. But it's like, I, I think of you guys as much of bravo as anything else well we were on bravo contrary to um what everyone believes because no one knows we were ever on bravo and no <laughs> what one are you co- talking about are you what everybody knows you're on bravo what are you talking about who well, doesn't bravo know? Doesn't, certainly doesn't remember oh, yeah yeah i yeah. think you know what wink i feel like we stopped bravo for so long and we really only started back for you and then it was oh, kind of so like sorry. falling off the wad- wagon and we really went, we fell off so deeply now. We haven't gone back to like New York or Potomac, Good. but we did, we really mainline Atlanta and like- so I was your switching from vape back to cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. I did that potentially to you guys. And, and thank you for your service to bring you guys back. I feel like it's like Rambo when it's like, he's retired, <laughs> he's a grizzled Vietnam veteran, yeah. but yeah. I, you know, we need Rambo back in the fight. So thank you for even giving any of your opinions on Bravo after how, you know, you've been treated at certain points. What we're trying to do with being back on the sauce is use it in a healthy way, you know, at use that we don't use the painkiller all the time yeah, and we try to recognize when it's becoming too toxic and bravo particularly maybe just because we used to be on it can feel like failure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well when it when it's done right yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's like yeah. one of the uh, yeah. big attributes of right. bravo yeah exactly so well, bravo con is like the epitome of like wow yeah failure you know well, it's different for you <laughs> 
I was, well, like I've been to Comic Con, and that's its own kind of shame uh, going to Comic Con because you see people dressed as Batman, and you're like, oh, there's no way, like that's you know, Batman isn't you know, like you know, like you're just not in Batman shape. But is BravoCon like? Do people come dressed as like Jacks and stuff? Like I don't, I didn't go to the first one. Do we? Is there like no big idea. costumes and stuff? I like hope so. Costumes? You know what? Now that you say that, <laughs> now you're. They in. all come. They just I look mean, like Real Housewives, probably naturally, all of them. <laughs> now that probably, would be. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Brian, you and Jax might be the only two besides, I guess, if Maurizio goes and the husband, you'll be the only two straight guys there. Will Jax even go? No, I don't think. No, 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 no. I, I think no way. I mean, yeah, that would be, that feels like I would fun. actually kind of like Jax to be there. I'm scared of running into Lisa Rinna just because I'm such a nut that I personalize everything. And I have a feud with Lisa Rinna that she doesn't know about. Oh. And where did you guys, because the last time I talked, you had seen Erica Jane at a party and you said she was stunning. You said stunning. 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 And where did you leave off with the finale watching, you know, frickin' frack go back like bad improvisers? Like, yeah, yeah, you get that, yeah. <laughs> oh and, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, wasn't that insane? Or am I am I just too biased? Um, well, you had a feud with Erica, right? That you didn't really yeah. we didn't well, now really I'm kind of it. over I'm over that a little bit. Now it's mainly Please. Rena. Yeah. I think the outfit was the first stop for Julie with Lisa with the gloves, Oof. pants, a dress, wore a cape and a shirt and a <laughs> boots and gloves and, and then wig. and her wig and the <laughs> hair on two wigs and then <laughs> looking like a weird Disney villain magician and then like Erica was in a like a beaded thing but was also blue they were both in the same color so it was just a weird yeah with them came coming and they're in. on the same broomstick when they're coming over to the party it did and feel like that it, it, sure did, it did feel like that it did and, and then we're and then lisa rin is all ah, and they're both kind of giving you like <laughs> all this kind of yeah, um, it's like so extreme like extreme, extreme. facial reactions and, and like they're in a 40s movie of like <laughs> oh <laughs> like, Going. It's Sunset Boulevard. It's like yes. the you know the picture right. got smaller. I did you know. Right. <laughs> if they're gonna talk about me, we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> no, she, no, this is what she she goes really. She goes. And what I'm talking about? I'm about, I'm about yeah. I'm about. Oh, now she, she gets really her, like she gets like barely coming him. out of her mouth. You know, yeah. like a like I'm oh oh they're gonna talk about talk about everybody. Well, and I just appreciate that she actually takes the time to film these scenes because she gets so much dick. I'm getting dick. She oh yeah, much, how then much dick was, she gets all the time? I've got a whole roster <laughs> waiting for me ever since Tom Durante went into the home. I don't care, Tom Durante. His dick didn't work for years. I on him. I only sucked a bunch of dicks. Like okay, then, fine. And then the reunion trailer, which came out a couple of days ago, uh, uh, Andy, Andy's talks about like, well, you know, how are the guys? She says, you have to have a Rasta. It's like a team. A like, imagine imagine right. the saddest team ever. The Bad News Bears is Erica's sex team of just like, they're on a text chain. They're like, what did you do to her? Did you? Yeah. They're like, couldn't we see a shadowy figure? Like, we didn't get any proof of actual dick. Like, couldn't we just see like a, a, a I don't need to see a face, but just even like a knock or somebody leaving like yeah. a walk well, of shame out of Erica's house. Yeah. Holding exactly. his, holding his shoes. Yeah. Walking yeah. <laughs> but then are the guys doing it too? Like, let me tell you, see, there she was. And, it was fun, <laughs> a party. and then I went over there and I offered her a cigarette, but she wouldn't take three. <laughs> Well, I didn't mind it. I liked him. I love Dick. I like Dick. <laughs> like my Dick, see? And then they're doing it. And then fucking Lisa Rinna comes in. in yeah. <laughs> and poor, Dude, and poor, Harry, poor Harry Hamlin. Like, he's just like, he agrees to come on camera like two times a year, it feels like. And then he's like solo camping or doing theater and stuff. And then like he's solo yeah, camping. He's doing like, that old chestnut. I made, I made the barbecue sauce. <laughs> that looks like him. And, um... <laughs> I made the barbecue sauce. <laughs> I mean, I made that. What is it? I made the spaghetti yeah. sauce. I mean, I mean, this bolognese is very uh, important. To very me. good. And Garcelle didn't say thank you or whatever. Okay. And then we had a Rena Rosé party. And it like Rena, first off, is not somebody I would be like, oh, that's somebody that I would love to see what their taste in wine is. Like, I would love to see what her taste in pills are. But like the mm -hmm. wine. So then Harry comes out of this Rena Rosé party. He's like, we've tested the grit. And I'm like, I trust Harry. Like, Harry's really into that. But I just found that fascinating that Harry's 
testing the grapes probably way more than rent. I like to put my hands in the soil. <laughs> I took the, the grapes by myself. I, when I was on L.A. Law, it was <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> Corbin Burnson. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When I remember in 1976 when I was in Summer Lovers. <laughs> <laughs> every breaks yeah, up, Ryan, every yeah. week. Clash of the Titans was a seminal film for the Clash, of, yeah. Clash of the Titans <laughs> was uh, there was when I was young, but Burgess Meredith gave me my <laughs> gave me my start, and I I was there for it. I didn't mind it. I don't and who wait, who was the girl in that movie that like remember like they was, the, um, they had a kid together? Uh, was, Ursula uh, Ursula Andress? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Ursula yes, Andress, and he was like a young he was a young lad. Um, Young lad, but listen, got to give it to Harry Hamlin, especially if you're gay. This guy in 70, whatever it was, playing gay, playing gay. Yes, is yes. At the for at that time. Wait, what was that? What was that? Whole career could have been ruined. He it was you know, a long time. Companion. What was I, that I film? Respect it. Which summer one? lovers? Summer lovers. Summer lovers. Okay, I was like, for some people were in like long time companion. companion. Okay, long time companion is we're now we're getting in the eighties. That's AIDS. That's all yeah, of- guys. For all the young people listening, just let us do this. It's good. Yeah, for us. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, if they're talking about uh, old yeah. movies again. God, <laughs> Clash of the that was like the first one where like the partner and then they get AIDS and they're dying and everybody's sad. Between basically like nineteen eighty and twenty twenty. Um, gay <laughs> movies were right about- up until bros last week, right up until <laughs> and yeah, right, right up until then, it was about like AIDS, AIDS, oh, AIDS, yeah. AIDS, AIDS, AIDS oh. gay guys dying and did dead, dead. We're so unhappy. Well, I was, I was, I mean, like, literally, I mean, I remember my best friend in high school, uh, was gay, and like, so I, I watched all like Long Time Companion, oh. I read Angels in America. Oh. I mean, it was all AIDS all the time, and I'm not, oh. I mean, it was like <laughs> Philadelphia came out, oh. and you had Tom Hanks, and there really was this, it was like, there was like a race to like how many AIDS projects you could make. Yeah. And then everybody was wearing the red ribbon at the Oscars all the time. Yeah, yeah, of course. And it was just a very interesting time. How did we even get here? Um, well, can I say <laughs> I had a toxic, this is why Bravo's toxic. We had met Erica. We deeply, deeply bonded. Of course we became like, what does that mean? You just said hi. Like, well, we spent the whole evening with her at a, at a fundraiser mm-hmm. and the production company that makes Van- that made Vanderpump Rules after show and Vanderpump Rules does Beverly Hills. So the head of the company was yeah, there. Evolution, so had- right? Yeah. Yeah. It was at Leah. It was at Leah's house and we hung out with her. I'm sure we felt more connected than she did. But either <laughs> way, we're like, bye, we'll call you later. <laughs> she was like, I don't know. There's no dick. But that was in January. So I could always figure out in the season where, like, I'd be like, oh, they, because even oh, yeah. Aspen was after this. You week. hung it. Yeah, yeah, like it, it would be within like 10 days, right. honestly. Right. So, oh my God. So you were, you hung out with her right before Aspen. Right, right before. Yeah. But then, and she was perfectly, we talked about like pills, and, but she was not. We, she was, she was, she, wait, 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 wait. We talked about pills, like fun pills or like, oh, I take two Excedrin because my knees. So we, like, yeah, we talked about like not loving weed and just like. I mean, we don't want to speak for her, but we. No, 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 no. Of course. Yeah, like yeah. we were like, there's, we there's the courts for that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but so wow. she was, but she was not drunk and saying, "I don't care about the victims." She was classy, <laughs> beautiful. I mean, what, beautiful. If, what if she did that in real life, even with you guys? I mean, only thing I care about myself is me, and you're like, "I'm just, we're just at a regular party." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I the, just asked if you wanted a drink. The team yeah. was, she introduced herself as Erica Girardi, like right away. It's yeah. like, bitch number one, we wow, know. Wow, the Girard. That's interesting. Like yeah. Erica Girard, because they, yeah, they're still not divorced, and. And she but never she, says that. She says Erica Jane, right? On the show. Yeah, I thought so. But Erica Girardi, that's like almost like a proud statement. Yes. Like when so... Julie Chen Moonves. Yes. Oh, and Tom Big Moonves. Brother was like, I'm yeah. Julie Chen Moonves. Moonves. Yeah. And it was very, because Les Moonves did a bunch of weird things to women, you guys. And, and it all like kind of exploded. And then Julie Chen came out on Big Brother and like still said that. And it was like a real statement, you know, that she, she added didn't, it like, didn't it. like women. Yeah. 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 And now and, what's and, different though about Julie Chen Moonves, <laughs> uh, as Harry Hamlin would say, is she went and started um, a, like a Christian, her Instagram became about doing Bible stuff on Instagram. And she tried to do a 180 or whatever to Try show to pivot. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. look how and clean she really we are. was like Jesus, 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 cross, cross, Jesus, Jesus, Bible study. But Erica Jane was like, I don't give a fuck about anybody. No, no. I mean, she leaned into it. I mean, that's yeah. I think, but that's what I kind of dig about the housewives. But sometimes it gets really old, especially with Erica and Rina. For me personally, was just that like, yeah, like you're leaning into it and the ego is so big. And that's usually what we like. But sometimes it's like, yo, like put the brakes a little bit, yeah, you know, like yeah. I appreciate that you are this much of a believer in yourself. And <laughs> but sometimes you're like, but then I just thought it was so sloppy from a reality show standpoint to really have that last scene uh, or the Erica and Rena stuff where it really was her publicist that leaked this stuff to the press. Well, I'm quite sure Erica, I mean, no shade, no tea to our best friend, Sisty. Yeah. <laughs> so our girl, almost sister, half sister. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I mean, the publicist isn't just doing that. Oh, no, no. I know it's like direct orders. I but know. this guy I thought it was Lisa Renna, even despite. I still think she's Lucy, Lucy, the apple juice. I think she's still that radar online. I think she learned it from yeah. Lisa. Um, and I think she like it was like she yeah. passed it down from generation to generation. And the moment I knew that Erica, the, the big tell for Erica and she always when she lies, she'll answer a question really fast. It'd be like. Did you, you know, son's like, well, fine, I'm going to ask them. Did you leak anything in the press? And she goes, no, I don't even know how to do that. Like she answers that. No, I don't even know how to do that immediately. Right. Like, no pause at all. I even know how to leak things to the press and I'm nobody. Like I know Erica Jane knows how to leak things to the press. Anyone who knows how to get on to la online would find someone's email and just, I mean, I think it's pretty Quite simple. I think it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's why I was like, what a weird tell like what a weird uh, obvious lie yeah. and like you know even Rena's like oh jesus why did i not teach you well enough like this is <laughs> wild um are you excited to watch the reunion or are you like i gotta tap out before the oh, reunion no we on your we last time we were on with you we are famously um or i should say in in not famous at all <laughs> but famously problematic when it comes to kathy hilton we Constantly oh. friends, relatives, because we like Kath. Um, on your show, we went so deeply offensive wait. about liking Kathy. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you guys know I like Kathy, right? Yeah, but you like her in more of like a, a less offensive way than us. Well, wait, how do you like? Well, oh, because you're huge fans of Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yes. No. I'm just, no, I'm just, <laughs> no. We just. No, uh, but we just did not give two motherfucking fucks about whatever occurred in that club. Oh, like we listen. We just don't if care. There's not a camera there. Friends. I don't give. And by the way, how dare you, Evolution? Like, don't let them hang out without a camera. Like, lock them in a room and have security guards out. Get their phones. Also, I don't believe that Lisa Rinna is not. If she's going home with Kathy, she has a phone. She she's argues with everybody with online. Her. You don't think she'd record some sound on that stuff? She for sure would. And we know from working on reality TV, not being on it, like working as story producers, this this rule has gone away. But the general rule is if you don't have it on camera, you don't deal with it because it's this There's is no the craziest thing that we would ever imagine, because not only there is not even. There's not even the hot mic with Lisa Barlow fucking talking. Yes, that, which by the way, Salt Lake, I mean, we're still dealing with that yeah. hot mic moment, but at least we have that. So we know exactly what was so offensive and right. narrative. But that here it's like, Lisa's an unreliable narrator. So why would we ever believe anything? And she ke it keeps making it worse. Like I'm supposed to believe she had PTSD and she's about to get cancer because of Kathy oh. Hilton. <laughs> I mean, I'm shook. I'm shook. I'm so shook. I can't go out tonight. <laughs> I mean, I can put on this entire blue outfit and these three wigs and do my face <laughs> three and wigs. put on more lips, but I'm shook. I'm so shook. Oh, oh I'm so I mean, shook. When she left Crystal, she's like, like, come on. I can't be here. Just, come on. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and I was just like, my thing was like, oh, that's somebody that has the shits. Like, she's yeah. like, going to blame it on Kathy, but she's like, I got to get home to my own bathroom. I mean, um, and look, at, look at, of all people, <laughs> Crystal, the bug nut of the century. <laughs> so hard on The Crystal. fucking bug nuttery <laughs> of it all. The thirst bucketry. And I know I will go so. You went so hard on Crystal her. last time. Yeah, she never I cannot. I'm sure she's lovely in person, whatever, but I'm sorry. Did you Both know her husband people. directed The Lion King? I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We know. Exactly. She's, you know what? We like her more now, though, because she's standing by Kathy. That's correct. And what's funny is that for somebody who's like, are you that girl? Are you that girl? <laughs> <laughs> or if you're saying, are you that girl over fucking racial shit? And that's what you're bringing to the table. Meanwhile, 
You have nothing to say about Kathy Hilton, who apparently said an F slur to a DJ. Yeah. The, that's right on the planet. But you're now you're staying quiet. That says to me, OK, I mean, we're ca- ca- you're working through that. It's, you know, maybe by the end of the reunion, you're going to love Crystal. Maybe it maybe. is going, to, you know, so I'm you're open. fully well. I'm and open. also the last scene with Kyle, like she almost literally gave like a Jim Halpert nod to the camera of like, can you believe this shit? Like watching <laughs> yeah, them go back and forth. And really it just reminded me of bad improvisers. Yes. Anding each other, like Lisa <laughs> and Erica. And then Kyle's like, come on guys. It's like literally my sister, my blood. And then there's a, a talking of Lisa going, I don't understand why she would pick her sister over me. And I'm like, <laughs> you fucking idiot. Well, and then I was like, I was like, oh, I know because she's like my family, nobody stands by me. So I don't understand why her family, like, why would she stand by her? Like I have a family, like her family must hate her. So she's just not used to family sticking by each other. But that's an obvious choice to me. Well, I still didn't understand why not one person said you have two daughters. If a side friend made J- jizzy rose or whatever her name is just like layla amelia Stella. and not amelia oh yeah yeah if somebody made amelia get mad at not amelia would you fucking stand by that no you'd be like no sisters stick together that's toxic sibling relationships everyone has them except for me because i'm an only child but like obviously like i don't get it she has two daughters she of all people should I- be that's Thinking why I feel like I take, I take, I, I'm like, am I, am I, am I high? Like, I don't under, like, this is so easy. Kyle keeps just saying, I understand. She's apologized. We've got to move on. I want the wet. The wedding's not going to be filmed. I have an actual family after this show shoots right. that I don't like in the off season that I have to hang out with. Yeah. And I don't think she hangs out with Lisa in the off season. In the limo, I don't either. when the two Disney villainesses yeah. were sitting in the limo, wasn't it Lisa Rinna said? Oh, no. Erica Jane said, well, you know, I got drunk and I let some things go. I just let some things go and then uh, what happened. And then Lisa Rinna was like, yeah, it just happens. It happens. And it's like, well, if it just happens, then what the fuck is your problem? Because that's exactly what happened. <laughs> that's excusable. Yeah. And so, all so you're you're so, it, yeah. And the editors, I wish they had a troll. Like, you have all this footage. Everything Lisa said in these last couple of episodes, they could have cut to, and they used to do this on Vanderpump Rules with Sheena all the time, is <laughs> cut to a super cut of Lisa literally blowing her fucking mind, yelling at people this season, and do a super cut of that. Because how is Lisa saying she's never seen anything like that? Yes. And then it makes me kind of hope that Kathy really did something. So then I want to see it. I'm like, Kathy exploded. That sounds fascinating. I want to well, see that on camera. If she exploded, which I believe she, I believe she did explode. I, oh, believe, totally. she was I believe she was mad. She apologized to her. But at the end of the day, she might've exploded and said disgusting things. And she might've used this word and that word. And she might've said, threatened people in a blackout state, which I'm quite sure none of them have ever done. Yeah. Oh wait, except for Lisa Rinna, who actually threw a glass. At another person, she physically assaulted someone, but she's the one who's scared. So you're not going to let this lady, this rich, the richest lady alive, who fine out of touch. Well, come on, whatever. Erica thinks the Girardi name is more powerful hey, than the Kathy Hilton I'm name. Sorry, Kyle, I love your sister, but she just she's not well known enough to get me out of the press or whatever. It's like, lady, <laughs> listen. <laughs> oh my god. Hilton ate a pound of caviar <laughs> on a, a baked potato. potato. And you a hero are, in my book. Hero. A hero. hero. She should be given the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> I'm like, wait, wait, wait. There's a conga line to Michael Jackson and we don't get to see it? Like, I want to see a fucking conga line. Like, I don't, uh, I think so that's who, up my alley. Who says no? They're the ones that should be ashamed. No yes. wonder she dragged them. I wouldn't care if it was literally a remix of Beat It about molesting kids. I'm like, let's do the fucking conga immediately to this shit. I know my mom, like, I, and that's like, I, I knew as soon as Kathy did not change her slippers or her bed pants to go to that club. I was like, I've seen my mom do the same thing. I knew, I knew something bad. Like, I was like, she's not in the club kind of mood. Like, it's just, this is not going to go well. And Lisa to go, Lisa brought her like took, Lisa's the one that took her home which is like right. Lisa's not a caring person unless it's nope. Erica so I didn't I was like this really did feel like a setup and that's why in the reunion yeah. I was so excited that that was like Kathy came in hot and was like yo yeah uh, because your contract is coming you're up the, and you're you the biggest need bully this. in Hollywood yeah two, she's working the storyline yeah and two points I want to make here one for those uh people who want to say that I can't believe and Michael she did this about Michael Jackson it's like if you're going to a Woody Allen movie still, or if you're listening to Chris Brown music, or if you want to put a, I'll put a list of 10 people together or watching a Harvey Weinstein movie, which we all still, still watch. Do. 
I watch Shakespeare you're, in Love every week. Oh, I love it. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. You don't get to choose one and another. This He was her friend. They grew up together. She is out of touch to a certain point. You have to give people yes. a little bit of fucking room. Yeah. Well, Number two. Number motherfucking two. Okay, we all love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we go. Ryan, it's something about. It. Yes, I'm right. Number two. Back. Number two. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I can't remember what it is. Oh, you, got, you about Kathy? stick the it's landing. About it's about Kathy. Did you see Latoya stood up for her last oh. week? Kathy, Latoya Jackson. Latoya was like, Kathy's an amazing person. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I love Kathy. she was friends with friends. Hey, Miss Kathy, Miss Kathy. I always. <laughs> That's why we started all these businesses. I mean, <laughs> I always do Michael Jackson's ghost on my podcast. I'm like, Miss Kathy, Miss Kathy, can I have some caviar, Miss Kathy? <laughs> like Michael Ms. Jackson Kathy. is hanging <laughs> around while she's Ooh, eating. Sham on, around. sham on, Miss Kathy. She, she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she should leave out a little bit of caviar for the ghost of Michael Jackson like he's Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so... She's um, like, this is for Michael. We leave a little bit yeah. for him every time we have Michael, lunch. Michael, Michael, are you there, Michael? These are beautiful <laughs> flowers, by the way. Michael, can you hear me? It's Kathy. Um, are hypocrites. It, it just makes me crazy. People are just so hypocritical. And like, we're all problematic. And we're, and we're all guilty of being hypocritical, too. We've just. Yes. Been, oh, I'm hypocritical about so myself all the learned. time. Yes. But I'm also. But I'm also not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. Like I actually, yeah, sure. like I'm like, oh guys, I've fucked that up royally. Yeah. But I think that's, I think that's because I don't have a massive ego. If I did, like I'm like, oh, I guess I just didn't have, like, wasn't raised with a massive ego. I I would have been like a housewife, but I just wasn't raised that way. Um. So I don't know. Like the, it, it, it's never a season of Beverly Hills if you don't if you're like des like I want this to end so badly, and that means it's a season of Beverly Hills. Right. Like we wanted it to be over. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it's like, that's when, you know, it's a season of Beverly Hills when you desperately yeah. want it to be done. I know that this, I know that this reunion now, our favorite shows at period are always the reunions. This is like across the board. We've gone and watched, we hate 90 day fiance. Cause it just isn't funny. It's like depressing. We'll go watch yeah. the reunions. Cause we just like reunions because yeah. they're so garbage, so trash, so great. aggressive. So this great. one for sure. There would have been no missing it. Like if we didn't watch the season, we could have come in cold, like just woken up from a coma. We would have been like, but I, it's going to be jaded so though. Hot. That like I'm jaded though because I'm like it's going to be four parts. They're probably not going to bring Kathy out until like the last ten minutes of the fourth uh, episode. You know, like I get scared that I'm like oh, I'm already thousand. jaded. Jamie yeah, Lee it's... Curtis comes on on the first part next week. Uh, I saw Jamie um, Lee Curtis does. Is that serious? Yeah. No, for real. They, they actually showed her. Oh, on the pre the they didn't show her in the I'm reunion trailer. So is she going to come on and gently kiss everyone on their head? <laughs> she like, Andrew, it's like, chic, chic. Oh, look at you. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you aren't jaded because that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> come on. Just come Ooh. on with that. Yeah, no, it's um, all about it's getting to the last one. Andy Cohen's sweating. He's furious. He's now being slightly abusive to all of them. Yeah, oh, it started, the trailer starts off with her, Kyle going, uh, Andy, I can't stay for the toast. And he's like, Doug, what are we going to do? <laughs> Doug, yeah. we, can we let her go? Yeah. Like like she's a caged animal or something. I like to watch Andy Cohen <laughs> during the reunions progressively degrade and how his hatred of women's yeah. voices. <laughs> And even though I don't think he hates women, technically, I do think he kind of does. And if he didn't before, he definitely yeah, does he's now always like, can't help it. All right, just shut up. Your voice they all have his number. Me. They all have his fucking number. Imagine the text he wakes up to. He can't yeah. stand he talk, the talk. I, you're right. And that's true. And that's true. No, I mean, that's he, it's. It's 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 annoying. I mean, it's got to be a, a long day's work. But you can tell yeah, the Shaws. But, he's I like mean, they're not allowed to drink. The Shaws, right? He's like, <laughs> you know what? Gigi, no. Golnessa, no. And then it's like yeah. certain ones they won't give Atlanta any any alcohol. <laughs> he just but can't anymore. I I uh, yeah, like the Andy thing too is like, and you guys did this because you had the Vanderpump Rules after show, like. I know you have to like, you know, you're, you're pressed for time, but it'll be these big like questions. It'll be like, Erica, you know, so where are you with the law thing? And why are you fighting back to get your earrings? And she'd be like, well, that's a legal matter. I'm uh, well, and instead of pressing, it'll be like moving on crystal. That was a great sweater you wore on the second episode. Annoying. Like, yep. you know, that's the thing. Cause I'm like, no, no, let's ask it like an hour worth of questions. And I think sometimes the fans are so much more into it where we're like, 
I'm willing to stay 10 hours. Like, let's do this. Oh. Yeah, and also fuck your cat sweater. We don't care. We don't need to hear about That's Sutton and her fucking blind date. Like, no, <laughs> cut it out of the reunion. Her and Sanjit. I just wasn't sure Sanjit was going to be right for me, but there we were sitting at dinner and there he just kept asking me he, out. Said, he not? looked so uninterested in her that oh. I was like, so I was like, how does that keep going? I don't and know. then she said this, she was know. talking to some dude on Bumble for 40 minutes and then it like went green. I was like, that guy just blocked you. Like the guy blocked you out of nowhere. You must've said something. And it blocked oh, her. just like my boutique. And do you want to come down? And I got whatever and all and my cats. And I just, what, oh, oh God. Oh my God. Crazy. Okay. This is going too fast. You know, I, got, yeah, at least I got to switch over to Salt Lake really quick. Yeah. Cause I know we've got only like 10 or 15 more minutes. Salt Lake's only two episodes in and they've already brought so much drama. Where are you guys at with Salt Lake so far? <laughs> Here's where I'm at. Okay. Wait, Here's where I'm at. Oh God. <clears throat> Get it ready. <clears throat> so, um, one. One, um, I'm saving my money to buy another breastplate because Mark really likes them. You gotta start with your brutalizing my family. Oh, you're family. brutalizing Learn. my family and down with, uh, and John. <laughs> More nasally. Oh, you're brutalizing my family, John. I'm gonna wear a fork 70s clothes to make me look like interview from a vampire. <laughs> and I'm wearing a breastplate. I'm triggered by from last year. <laughs> My son Brox is triggered. It <laughs> sets like, what, what are you doing there? Come on, we're like, we oh, yeah. ramen. I guess we can't afford real food, according to Lisa Barlow. He's like, I'm in Canton, Ohio, with four thousand employees. Isn't it crazy yeah. that in a year, uh, Seth, who grew, talk about facial hair, grew yeah. himself a beard. And his hair, and started wearing baseball hats, and his fashion changed. The they housewife glow up. The housewife glow up. Like Julie, like resents his like him feeling himself. I can't like, oh, dude, I've tonight. talked to girls like he'll he won't be creepy in DMs, but he'll be like oh, I'm sure he positive. Like he'll be like just remember, like he'll like do inspirational, like motivational things. I've heard a couple of girls will be like he'll be like you know remember you can do anything today and like stuff like that. And I'm like, first uh, off, you can't do anything today. There's only so no. many hours in the day. And like, but like, he's that kind of like uh, inspirational quote guy, I guess. And remember the titty cake and all that. And yes, the t- he was always like, Fuck <laughs> her, creep. Fuck him. I'm sorry. Even Whitney was like, I'm uncomfortable now around Seth. And now <laughs> exactly. her tits, are they about to explode? I mean, honestly, like. Dude, that scene with Lisa Barlow this past week's episode when they're in the pool, because, and by the way, you know, shout out to Whitney for seeing, for in her spiritual cleansing, she saw a young crying Lisa Barlow. So she invited her to Scottsdale early and they have this like kind of awkward hot tub scene where, <laughs> you know, Whitney's boobs are just out. And they are, Le- they're like almost pulsating. The veins are running through them. They're like mammary glands, like, boom. <sighs> Oh, like heartbeat. I'm like, are they going to fucking explode right now? If you pierced them, they would explode other boobs. You know what I mean? It, we, her, they boobs are, are, her boobs are upstaging yes. other human beings in the scene. I'm like, yeah. I'm like lost in, in how swollen the tits are. Swollen. Have well, you, but okay. I, but. and this might make me a creepy guy, but like I have, it's not even a theory, but it looks like she's gotten a breast reduction. If you look at her Instagram photos lately. So I think oh. she got some of them oh. removed or like, oh. I don't know what exactly, but it looks did. like, it because sense, yeah. I think you get on TV and you realize like, holy shit, those are like volleyballs. You know, like I think even Justin, her husband was like, you know what? Maybe we can go to a smaller size or something. It looks uncomfortable. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look like it's even comfortable to sit there. No, it doesn't. But listen, perfect example, Justin, that guy, whatever you think of him, he is the same person who started on season one as he is in season three. It's the same guy. Seth, no. Take your fucking creepy what you're doing, the two of you <laughs> with your fucking filler and your bullshit. And Lisa Barlow's right. You're fake. See, that's why that's it. And fuck off. You're that's fake why it hurts that. so bad. That's because like as as much as that hurts is like I know they were quote unquote friends, but like there's a lot of hard truths in Lisa's angry statement. Like uh, it, it's like it's it's not wrong in no. a lot of the way like no. and that's what i think hurts the most is that everybody knows but in the housewives like chess game it got jen shaw back into the game because meredith's like 
You're like, oh, let's hang out, Jen. Let's do it. And then she's like, well, I heard a little rumor about. Um, oh, I mean, and all of that. Yeah. And <laughs> and even, even, I mean, I'm sorry. Not like, the hooker. Not the sucking the dick for the fucking Vita tequila. Like just. Yeah, you, I was like, I worked really at a bar. Like there was never any, like I got like Lakers tickets once. Like that was like it. And they like begrudgingly gave that. Like I, I was never offered sex, you know? Oh, you no, think, I mean, no. you ditch that. You, she wants us to believe that Lisa Barlow is going around Utah sucking <laughs> the dicks to sell Vita tequila. There's, she seems you, so asexual to me that I'm like, I can't even like, let me put this right, thirst buster, let me put this thirst buster down and get on yeah. the equipment. I just don't see it. The one that I would agree. do it is very not is, sexual. No, but Meredith is. I think Meredith would. How about that? Well, yeah, Do we you will. guys remember the first season? Jen Shaw is the one that said Meredith was dating some dude in New York. And yes. now Meredith's like swimming around with Jen Shaw. She's, uh, by the way, be a criminal, folks, because you will be celebrated on these shows. You'll get the big rooms. You'll get all of this stuff. Like Jen Shaw literally must be like going like, holy shit, they're idiots. Like they are fucking idiots once again. Like I actually did something of, of interest and nobody's <laughs> questioning me in a bad way about it. I want to say that I don't usually we don't watch watch what happens live usually because we are bitter that it comes in during the preview for the next either the last scene yeah. the preview for the next and it drives me nuts like I want to see that and here comes watch what happens live and you have like clowns fucking lurking or whatever so but I did watch the one with Lisa Barlow because we are like stands to the yeah. end of time for that bitch okay so she's on there it was so and Whitney who we lovingly call julie said the sunburn slut so we love you <laughs> we call whitney so julie now herself is the sunburn slut because she got sunburned oh, congratulations so, thank so you they were on there together they're good friends now <laughs> okay and andy cohen asked lisa why did you say she's that meredith had slept with half of new york and your hot mic meltdown and she's like he, she he said did meredith tell you that or say something and she's like no, Jen Shaw had been saying it all day. She said it a million times on the bus. Yes. A million times. And so I'm now drunk and I'm just repeating what I heard. And I was like, I literally, my head exploded. I was like, and now Jen's saying, no, it's crazy. I mean, and, and, and Lisa, poor Lisa doesn't want anything really to do with Whitney and Heather. If you watch the other seasons, she's like, nope. guys, I need you in my corner right now. Yeah. Please help me. And yeah. like they, and, and Heather is like, kind of like, okay, like, Cause Heather still is like, wants to be liked by it's funny how this shit never leaves. Like you want to be liked by the popular kid. Yeah. And she's like, and all I can think of is like, she hates how they dress. She <laughs> thinks they're tragic. Yes. She, she called she, Heather she's like, look like how far lady. I've fallen. Look how far I've fallen. Yeah. You know? And she's like, I'm on an Island guys. I love it. But I love it. That with me. She only had Whitney. It was so sad. Yeah. I can't fucking wait for the tide to turn. And everybody to turn on Meredith. I can't wait. Well, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that's going to happen? Well, either. Well, we know Lisa and Whitney are best friends now because they were just on watching. Well, and and Whitney and Heather, if you watch the preview for next week, you guys, they get into a, like a blowout fight because Whitney had said that Heather knew about Meredith sleeping with some of New York. And Heather's like, no, I didn't. Oh, are you fucking? And she's like really in her face. And I was like, whoa, Heather just like exploded. And then remember the part where she throws her into the, they didn't show it. So I don't know if it's next week or the week after, but she literally, she just tosses her, but because she of the Lego yeah. lady, she just like throws her, like flings her 13 feet into a window. And it's like, <laughs> yes, 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 <laughs> fucking yes. Um, okay. So where are you guys on the Jen Shaw stuff? Because I think in the second episode, they really tried to um, uh, make us sympathize and empathize with her family and her mom and a thousand piece puzzle that she'll not finish before jail. And what do you guys think about how they're handling it so far? Are they being too easy on her? This is where we're going to get in trouble. Well, <clears throat> okay. Oh, no. We really wanted Jen Shaw to be innocent. And um, it's really disappointing. However, however, uh -oh. we don't know the extent of what she did. We don't know ex exactly what she knew. I do think that she did. I, I don't I, I we blame Stuart. Yeah, bit. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't help but believe <laughs> blame Stuart. I don't think she's dumb, but no. I don't I don't imagine she's smart enough. And I also don't think she's that. Um, um, 
uh, like malicious a mas- like enough. A too. I feel that she's an empathetic person who has actually has a love in her heart. And I don't imagine that she could live with herself if she knew she stole all the money from a 90 year old. There's something missing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And maybe well, I'm not, I don't know. To tie in, though, with what we'll talk about probably on your show, the January 6th committee, she was using third party apps to communicate with people that you cannot trace. Like she was like, I think she is more cunning and and smart than anybody. And also, I think she probably is a hell of a lot of fun to hang out with. I think she does have big emotions. I think she loves her family, probably a great mom, all of those things. But I think all of those things can be true at the same time. And I also think it's easy to turn a blind eye to the elderly and go, well, I can excuse it because I'm taking care of my whole family. I got 30 people over here I'm taking care of. And this is just business. This is how you do business. Trump's a criminal. I can be a criminal. Da, da, da. Maybe, like, yeah. I think you you make excuses be. for all of this, in my opinion. But they shot this before she changed her plea. So the whole season, she's going to be professing right, her yeah. innocence. Now, and again, you know, and, and going in even with changing her plea, as we know, there's people rotting in jail who were change their plea and are not guilty. So I would say, I don't think she's innocent, but I don't know that in, I just, I don't think she's innocent. I think she needs to face consequences for what she did. Even if it was just bad choices, even if it was turning a blind eye, even if it's, if it's pretending not to know you, 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 you were involved. You stole yeah. a lot of people's money. It's not right. You need to pay some consequences. I personally feel for someone like that, like, they need to, I don't know, when it comes to jail, it's just like you see Teresa Judice and these people who go to prison, like they need to be in prison. I just feel have a feeling about pr- just like we're paying. She can go if she, if she, uh, if she obviously defrauded, you know, elderly people or anyone out of money, she can go and spend two years in jail. She will. She'll lean in and fucking make t-shirts that say sunburn slut or whatever her thing will be and she'll kill it. She'll be abusive to more. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying like, I feel like she, she'll have that prison. I mean, remember that photo of Teresa with all her friends from prison? Like, and they were, I think she was in the chair and they were all surrounding her. I was like, Teresa has her own gang in there. Like she's thriving. We found yoga. Teresa at Melissa's house, literally within a month of her getting out and talk about thriving. Bitch was like, I was getting massages, doing yoga. yoga. She got all yeah. fit. Yes. Well, change for the better. Well, if she goes to a federal, it's the thing. The funny thing is the um, I, there's this interview with Rosie O'Donnell who talks about recently in Howard Stern. She talks about the whole time that Martha Stewart went to jail. Martha Stewart went to a federal prison, whatever. People forget about that. The, yeah, she, for we are yeah, two years yeah. we're obsessed with it and there is a there is a thing i don't know it's a whole other conversation yeah. but there's a thing where women are scapegoated and used and then whatever and martha stewart who's one person there's a whole 50 men who did what she did who didn't go to jail 50, so 000. so whatever so okay but while but when you're rich or in a, the certain kind of prison yeah you do get like rosie and also she went to visit her and she was like um She's walking to the commissary or whatever and getting like, like designer shampoo. <laughs> she was living uh, like Rosie looked beat up, but like Martha Stewart had like her roots. I was like, oh, right. no, I love Dill. She's like the yeah, Martha, the Martha yeah. Stewart Shawshank Redemption. Um, there's some things you can't get, but yeah, I mean, I, there's a soft spot in my heart for her. She'll go to prison. She'll write a book. She'll come out. Hopefully she'll come out and do something good. I mean, the thing is with people like this, in my opinion, the hope is that, they don't, they're not murderers. They're not rapists. They didn't do shit like that. There's a, there's, there's a redemption for them. And I think that I want to be, be open to that for her. I find Jen Shaw less offensive than Meredith. <laughs> and I, well, I mean, I mean that it, for, for what we've seen so far, I agree with that, but that's what I, I feel like we haven't really pressed in on what the actual details are. And I, I mean, but I, I, I love that you, I, I like what you say about redemption. It's just that we've learned so much with Bravo that a lot of people have never, they always say like, you know, uh, you know, I'm redemption. And then we, they never put the work in. So I hope Jen does. And I hope we and find she, out more she, about it. Like she, agreed. Is, she is very um, damaged. We know from the show, she's super volatile. She had, yes. she was, she's caught on tape being. Yes. Like, oh yeah. Like, to all those assistants and all yeah, that. Like, very, like, yeah, like, yes, that's true. I, I just know for me, she had a Kathy Hilton breakdown. I told Julie today, I'm like, I don't I have a thing <laughs> with her voice, her laugh and her smile. I love her laugh. She's funny. 
And when she's like, literally, she's about to go to jail and she'll be yelling. I'm, you know, with her weird filler. I want to kill myself. And then two seconds later, she's like laughing about the fireplace. And I'm now (laughs) feeling joy. I'm like (laughs) thinking it's so funny that she can't fucking get the fireplace. Like I like like she just makes me like something about her. I don't it's that. Honestly, I do think you have to also put an account. I don't know if it was for Teresa, you know, the what that's different with her this is different for her i do think jen cha is probably a substance abuse problem i think that whatever you come from whatever abuse your background you're drinking you're doing whatever drugs you're get volatile and those things you know i again that you compound and you add up a person's life and unless in my opinion like again unless they do physical violence upon someone i do think there's room there's a, just an allotment there's an allowance for because it do you like all, her? I don't know. Do you like her? I, I, I thought, you know, like the first season before any of this came up, I was like, wow, she is throwing everything at us. She's throwing every housewife move in the book. I mean, I'm like, yeah, she is a live wire. And I was like, okay, good. But it made me like, I was like, wow, this, I really like Salt Lake City. And then, you know, like I've read a lot of the court documents and stuff like that. And I was like, and my grandma, like she got taken for like by somebody yeah. like this. And that had like, I have a personal kind of, so like that pissed me off. And I was like, yeah. that's fucking gross. It's okay. fucking gross for Stewart and all the other people they got. It's gross. Stewart. I don't love that. But, you know, like, listen, Jen makes great TV, but I'm going to also call somebody out if I think yeah. they did something wrong. I mean, and also that's just sad. Like, me, I'm a grown man and I will call out a housewife. I will. <laughs> I'll do it. Don't even do that. You know? But <laughs> listen, I, I'm really excited that she filmed. I cannot wait to watch the remainder of the season. Like the first two episodes, the second episode already like Whitney has a recovered memory that she was abused. Oh, I was like, holy shit. Like what? Yeah. yeah. Now that I want to say, like, you know, we had all the fun in the world with Whitney and the sunburn slot and the stripper pole <laughs> and all the shit and the swollen titties. And we knew, of course, you know, and this is without tr- triggering anyone. A lot of people have suffered abuse and we can be like, obviously very like belittling or just insensitive yeah. about it. Uh, yeah. You know, anytime someone's on a, has a stripper pole in their home and is accused of being a swinger and then puts, does the sex scene on Bravo with the husband. They also met married to other people, got ex. their whole thing is very <laughs> sexual. Yeah. So it was not really a shot in the dark to be like, yeah, she was probably molested. And we would yeah. say casually. And then of course it feels so terrible. That was one of the most, if not the like most intense, like, I mean, I cried when Lisa Barlow was drunk and the so beside herself about Meredith. Like I can get sensitive about stuff, but that thing with her and that husband, dude, I was like, I was like, I don't even know, if I, 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 but I was like, I I'm okay with not seeing this. Like I like, maybe the camera guy leaves. Like I'm okay. Like this feels too, like too real and too personal. Like yeah. I was like, and then, you know, they get over the couch and you can tell she's all like her cheeks are red. And I was yeah. like, like, I mean, that camera guy, I just wonder what, it, like, he goes home to his family or what is like, oh, today was There's rough. Like people in the room. Yeah. 10. That was one of the most intense things I've ever oh witnessed. Oh, my God. In my life. And um, it, it was, I had to run away from the room. And I'm, I'm telling you, the tears were like, <laughs> wait, I don't even have any moisture. I'm so dehydrated permanently. Well, I was like, there, I is a pre- pretty- there is a preservative that I could recommend in yeah, exactly. that could actually, um, okay. I've taken up so much of your time and I want to do your show as well, which, uh, dumb gay politics is the show. And you guys, oh, I, uh, is there anything else come besides the sneeze? Is there anything sorry. else coming up that, uh, that we Just need uh, to know about no, oh, the, Patreon, the Patreon, right? If you guys, if any of your listeners, like, you know, either don't aren't interested in politics, feel like politics is toxic you know, or just don't want to deal with having different politics or whatever. We have a Patreon. It's no politics, still probably quite toxic um, in its own way, but it's definitely no politics at all. It's not even that we don't talk about Bravo really. We might just- No, you guys are fucking funny regardless of, that's why I said anything you talk about, I want to hear. Like that's, that's why it works. It's like, you, you know, it's like you guys have like this awesome- Work, I don't know, awesome working relationship that I love. And thank you so much for doing this again. This is just like, I feel like I have friends now. Do I'm like, fuck yeah. I like <laughs> look forward to this. Um, so no, I want gay the, politics. So to, yeah, julianbrandy.com is where you can go to get dumb gay politics or our Patreon or, you know, just julianbrandy.com. Julianbrandy.com. That'll be on the show description as well, you guys. And I'll put it up in my stories when this comes out as well. Uh, thank you guys so much. And I hope you'll come on a fourth time eventually. All of any time. Next, yeah. I'm going to have my mustache grown out. 
Yeah, maybe we'll do a competition. Yeah, yeah. and maybe well, somebody no will way. check. Maybe somebody will check my boobs uh, in married if medicine. You, maybe. Well, yeah. <laughs> keep that mustache going, and I bet <laughs> someone will. <laughs> 